Everyone, welcome to the show. I have a bunch of updates to get to about Donald Trump and investigations and his cases, um, including the most exciting news that one of Trump's former campaign officials is said to be in talks with the special counsel to cooperate in the investigation into the fake electors plot. The campaign official is Michael Roman. And according to emails from the time in question, he was very much involved in the coordination of the fraudulent electors and the forged documents, um, which, of course, as we all know, they falsely claim that Trump won the election. So Roman is also said to be the person who delivered the lists of fake electors to the Capitol on January 6th for Mike Pence. And he could implicate a lot of Trump's allies, people like Rudy Giuliani, Boris Epstein, um, Jenna Ellis, a lot of others. And if that wasn't exciting enough, it was also reported on Friday afternoon that the special prosecutor has given limited immunity to two of those fake electors. Um, in exchange for their cooperation, they will be receiving limited immunity. Also, According to sources who are familiar with the testimony and recent subpoenas, the DOJ has refused to grant extensions for witnesses. They're demanding that all of these people testify before the end of this month, meaning this week um, is the last time that they can testify and they're required to do so. And according to the Rolling Stone news outlet, the special counsel has recently honed in on attorneys who worked to help Trump overturn the election. So primarily Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, Jeffrey Clark, people like that. Um, on top of all that, we just found out today that at least five or six Secret Service members have testified before the grand jury. Now, we don't know a whole lot about it. We don't know who they were, but you know, you can imagine that it might be those people who were involved in the altercation on January 6th, the, the one that all of them denied to the January 6th Select Committee. It's a different story, though, when you get them under oath in front of a grand jury and there's a very big risk of them going to jail if they lie. So they can deny all they want to the January 6th Select Committee, which had no teeth. They had no ability to prosecute them or, you know, put them in jail if they lied. And remember, a few things have happened since then. Right. I mean, we just saw Walt Nata indicted on numerous charges, including conspiracy with Donald Trump for trying to help Trump cover things up, allegedly. So they might be looking at it a little bit differently than they did when they were testifying before the select committee for that reason as well, because they see, oh, all of these people are losing their livelihoods. They could lose their freedom. Um, Trump is not being reinstated, so he's not going to be able to pardon me. More than likely, he's going to be locked up, so he's not going to be winning the presidency in 2024 and, and pardon me at that time either. So different calculus for these people. Um, I would say that, yeah, they, they're, they might be singing a different tune. Um, and one day prior uh, to all of the, the first news I mentioned. So on Thursday of last week, there was a man named Gary Brown who was seen entering the grand jury investigating Trump's alleged coup attempt. Brown was the deputy director of Elections Day operations for the Trump 2020 campaign. And this January 6th Select Committee said that they had found, quote, credible evidence that he was aware of and took part in the fake elector scheme. And according to news reports, Brown is just one of at least six people who sat for the grand jury over a period of four days, all of whom were reportedly involved in the fake electors plot. So they could be getting very close to an indictment in that portion of the investigation. I mean, they don't have to wait for the entirety of the January 6th investigation to be complete, I would think, because it seems like there's some crossover, but there could be some very unique um, indictments. There could be some very unique charges related to the coup plot versus January 6th itself and inciting a riot or uh, attempting to uh, obstruct an official proceeding. 
I could be wrong, but we'll we'll see. Um, I think it would be great if they would charge Trump once a month, every month <laughs> for the next two years for his various alleged crimes, alleged quote unquote. Um, that would be awesome. Anyway, in relation to his classified documents case, the judge scheduled a trial you might have heard for August 14th. But all of the experts said, now that was way too soon, that's never going to happen. Well, now the special counsel has asked that the trial be pushed to December 11th. They said that based on security clearance and you know all the classified documents issues, they need more time and Trump's team needs more time to review the evidence. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, could be an early Christmas present. Also, we found out that they told the judge they have over 80 witnesses, I believe it is. And then the, the judge today said, no, she's saying you need to justify this extensive list to me. So we'll see what happens with that. In the meantime, the DOJ already started handing over evidence to Trump and in a court filing detailing the evidence. The government noted that there's more than one recording that they have of Trump, although there were two sources that told, uh, I think it was the Washington Post or New York Times, that the recordings don't contain, these additional recordings don't contain anything about classified documents, so we don't know what they are. In related news, a judge agreed to a request by the special counsel to protect the evidence and uncharged individuals. The new order says in a nutshell that Trump and his attorneys, um, it can, they can't share, copy, disseminate any kind of evidence in any way. If they do so, they face contempt proceedings and sanctions. So we'll see if Trump abides by that. There's also a bit of news about Trump's sexual abuse case. Trump has placed $5.6 million in a kind of escrow account. So this is while he appeals the jury's decision and their ruling in E. Jean Carroll's favor. As you guys all know, Trump was found liable for defamation and sexual abuse of Carroll, and the jury awarded her a total of $5 million. So both sides have now agreed that if Trump loses this appeal, the $5 million will automatically be released to Carroll. If Trump wins his appeal, he will get that money back plus any accrued interest. If, however, the appeals court or the Supreme Court kick this back to the Manhattan court for additional proceedings, the money will remain in an escrow account until it be the case becomes, quote, final and unappealable. So I will definitely let you guys know what happens with all of that. Um, in regard to Carol's other case, the first case she filed against Trump, which is the defamation case only, uh, which was for when he was in office and allegedly defamed her, the judge has ruled that the trial will begin on January 15th of 2024. So Trump could be just finishing up his classified documents case, or it could still be going on when this other trial begins. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs> anyway, guys, I will let you know when I hear more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please become a supporter if you can. Links are down below in the description box on YouTube and on the podcast. Greatly appreciate all of you, all the support you give with not just monetary, but the support in every way, shape, and form really honestly means so much to me. Love you guys. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.